Hey guys, it's SD, your host of the Life Fix Relationship Podcast, where people with all sorts of backgrounds, challenges, and life experience show us how they make their relationship extraordinary. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. We are really lucky this week to have with us Dr. Yassi Schaefer. Do you want to tell us a bit about yourself and the amazing work you do? Sure. Hi, uh, Yassi Schaefer, clinical psychologist, um, director of Empower Health Center, a group practice of multi-specialty psychologists, social workers, psychiatric nurse practitioners, um, really work as a collaborative team providing mental health services uh, to the community in any way that we can, including individual therapy, group therapy, um, psychiatric medication management. Um, our goal is to, to give back to the community in any way that we can and you know, hopefully address some of the questions as it regards to relationships, um, you know, whether in terms of general relationships or husband and wife and really our, um, my honor and privilege to be here today. Awesome. Let's get right to it. What makes your relationship extraordinary? Okay. Uh, relationships in general um, are extraordinary. Um, but uh, one thing that we want to always keep in mind when it comes to relationship is that relationship is always as extraordinary as a person makes it, right? So the more effort we put into it, that's how we can define our relationships. Um, on, on a personal note, what makes our relationship extraordinary is really, you know, getting past that quick love bubble at the beginning of marriage and no, noticing and working towards constantly working on it, just like we would constantly put care into our children, into our jobs, um, into anything that's meaningful, marriage is no different. And you know, usually within a few months of marriage, you realize that if you don't put in the actual work that's necessary, things just fizzle away like any relationship. And the constant you know, awareness and being cognizant of the work that's necessary is really what's going, you know, that makes myself and my wife, our constant goal towards that, keeps on building and building and makes it better, surprisingly, than it could be in the beginning of the years of marriage. So what's one thing that you do to make your relationship extra special? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, based on, you know, what I said previously, you know, to what we do typically together um, to make it extraordinary is always being in touch with what our needs are for that specific time in our life. Did we just have a kid? Are we having a child? Um, where are we holding in terms of, you know, winter, summer, spring with, you know, the children obviously involved, the businesses that we are both um, you know, doing and, and working through, uh, we, we try to focus on where we're holding at where we are. If it's that we both want the vacation, that we both want to um, just take time off, spend time with each other. Um, but probably something that we do consistently, which I find makes it just extra special, is literally 10 minutes a day, shutting the phone, shutting any outside noise, and just nothing. Just being there with each other and anything that comes up. Um, in our minds at that point, we communicate. And if we have nothing to say, we don't say it. Just that constant reminder that this is really what we're working towards our entire day and just allowing everything to just fizzle out is something that we look forward to and something that really makes our relationship thrive, you know, throughout the days and weeks and months. Wow, so you look forward every day to your 10 minutes. Yes, it actually, um, in the beginning, it becomes like a burden. Um, it, it, it's something that it seems like another job, but when you really put that effort into it, it's something that you actually look forward to more than anything else during the day. Wow. What's one difference between you and your spouse that you absolutely love? Okay. Um, difference that uh, you know, marriage is built on differences. So um, we, we, according to the Imago theory, we're actually attracted to the differences. We're not attracted to the similarities. So, uh, you know, differences could be... Uh, my wife is extraordinarily um, organized. She gets things done right away. She doesn't harp too much on things. Um, you know, if a task is get brought her way, she'll execute it within, you know, 30 seconds or less. On my end, even though that I can typically do that, um, you know, just maybe prioritizing becomes more difficult or things don't have to be done now. But, you know, the fact that my wife, as soon as I give her a task, will do it even though it didn't have to be done, or if I feel that this is necessary, or we feel it's necessary for the children, she'll take care of it on my end, and will probably linger uh, longer than it should, even longer than uh, doing it earlier. So the fact that she could get that done is uh, really something that I appreciate and something that I lack and I, I you know, feed off. So you give her more stuff to do? 
Um, I try not to. Um, that ends up happening, and obviously I have to be careful about that balance, not to allow, just because that is her talent, and that's a very, you know, key focus and, and key point and trait that she has, obviously uh, I would never take advantage of that. Um, but it's something that when she does do it, it's like, wow, here she does it again. Yeah, so you got to be really self-aware. Um, how do you deal with the challenges that come with marriage? Okay. Um, well, marriage by definition is differences, challenges. Um, raising kids is challenges. Um, building a business is challenges. So if we're under the assumption that challenges is what makes, you know, the goal and the value that we're working towards to perfect things, challenges actually brings us closer. So if I noticed that I said something to my wife that she didn't respond well to, that's when I question myself and say, what did I just say that could have been said differently? Where did I go wrong in the interpretation? Right? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Um, am, I in, I, am, am I enough aware of her love language, of her communication style, um, we're, uh, am I enough in tune with her needs, right? So men typically can go through an entire day and, and be, you know, working in the workforce and come home and see a house that maybe is not necessarily um, spick and span or perfectly according to the needs of the, you know, children and spouse. But how many diapers did she change that day? Did How many suppers did she make that day? How many times did she... Um, you know, call the doctor to see if the medication came in, um, you know, for the kids or if they're sick or just attending to their needs. So the challenge is really to be mindful and in tuning into the other spouse, which in general, just being mindful in general is a challenge. So finding and looking for those challenges is actually something I look forward to because that gets me to really get to know my wife to a new level that I didn't know in the past. So every time you get through a challenge, there's a deeper relationship. Oh, absolutely. It just, it, it makes it one step closer to, you know, just the oneness and, and really knowing each other. The way I look at marriage, um, which I think the way I define marriage is, you know, not based on intelligence, not based on having a good time together, but really knowing the other spouse, right? So if the expectation, the way I would see it is, is that if I'm feeling sad, I would want my wife to know why I'm feeling sad and how that happened and vice versa. If I see that something's off in her day, I should pretty quickly be able to know what went wrong in her day or at least identify it. Definitely not to challenge it on her, definitely not to not understand it. So if the whole basis of marriage is knowing the other spouse, which, you know, a husband and wife know each other more than any other you know, person in the world, right? On a physical level, on an emotional level, um, on, on so many levels, so getting to know my wife and her getting to know me is always going to make us more unified and put us more and more on the same page, which is vital for couples. Ever think you know your wife already completely? No. Um, and I, I, I think in general, getting to understand the other gender is sometimes just such a challenge. So by time, you know, especially within the Orthodox Jewish community, um, you know, where you grow up pretty much, you know, segregated just to understand the way a female or male thinks differently or responds differently. Uh, men are more logical, women are more emotional, right? And just trying to tune into that and understand it. You know, if women hint and we try to pick up on the hints, we don't get it, we do get it. All that in general is challenging. So the more I can go ahead and get to know her nuances, um, obviously um, it's always going to take time and it's something that I appreciate learning more and more. It just makes the, you know, relationship so much richer. Yeah. What have you been able to do because of your relationship together? Um, everything. I know that's going to sound uh, cheesy, but, uh, you know, just if we put everything on surface level and look at, you know, what we're blessed with, you know, children, um, you know, running a group practice, um, you know, financially being stable to bring up the kids and ourselves, going on vacation, you know, once, twice, three times a year, having things in order and set and ready, preparing for the future, I think that in itself is everything that I would ask for. I wouldn't ask for more. So based on our relationship, we achieved everything together. Um, you know, I don't think the expectation is that we should build Amazon together or we should go to the moon, you know, back and forth together. It's really to get through the day-to-day -day life with the least, um, you know, friction possible and in the most emotionally safe place and environment for ourselves and our children. 
What do you admire about your wife? Uh, really everything. Um, the, the idea that she, you know, based on what I mentioned in the past is her efficiency to, to get things done. The, the fact that we're both on the same page, that when something comes up, we address it right away. We don't wait. We don't let the vicious marriage cycle, which unfortunately so many couples can go ahead and let just, you know, 25, 30, 40 years, the same vicious negative pattern. It's so much predictable what he's going to respond when she says something and what she's going to respond when he says something. Um, marriage goes so quickly in that cycle. And if it's not quickly attended to, it can really go bust and it could stay stale, right? We're not even talking divorce or separation. We're just talking living lives together and not having any connection or relationship at all. So what I admire most is the fact that we can address things right away, not put our heads in the sand and do what needs to be done and then reap the harvest, you know, as the time goes along. Do you know your wife's love language and does she know yours? How does it play in your relationship? Right. So I, we definitely, in our practice, um, definitely go with the five love languages. Um, obviously, they can be tweaked. They're not um, 100% evidence-based, but they definitely do a good job in helping spouses recognize each other's um, language of love or what they attend to. So if you want to tweak it, you could. Um, I notice with my wife, and once again, this is the way I understand it, and myself and my wife have had many conversations based on that, is this, it took us a few years actually to realize what our individual love languages are. Um, you know, the way I understand my wife is that she appreciates a combination of acts of service and gifts, right? So acts of service may sound mean. She likes when I sweep the floor or clean uh, the dishes or, you know, put the kids to bed, which is true, but more what she likes, and I feel this is the case with many women, is not just being their slave, but really doing it as a gift. So if one day she comes home from work and I feel, and I notice that she had a hard day offering to make supper, offering to clean the house, but not that every day I'm going to come home and clean the house or every day do the laundry. But when I notice that it's probably necessary to sort of surprise her so that the gifts piece together with acts of service talks to her most. Um, you know, it's, it's even for me to understand my love language is, is complex, right? But to the extent that I can understand my, myself and my wife would have those discussions and really try to get them where they need to be, um, you know, so that we can be very clear on what talks to us, what doesn't talk to us. So I know my wife does not like surprise birthday parties. She does not like surprise getaways. Um, and in the beginning of marriage, I planned probably five or 10 of those and always wondering why my wife didn't find that extraordinary, but she just did it because that didn't talk to her. She liked to come plan. She liked to understand you know, what the steps would be. And I think that's important for no matter how romantic or how complex or, or genius a person comes up with a plan, if it doesn't talk to their spouse, they have to own up to that, admit it, and then try to learn the other love language and adapt to it. Yeah, it could be really tough because you worked so hard to make this whole surprise party and then right. she didn't like it. And, and that's where the anger and frustration of couples that are not willing to know that men are from Mars and women are from Venus and not willing to take the 10 minutes a day or really 45 minutes a day to get to know their wife would just get upset. I bought you a diamond ring and this is what you're telling me. I took you to Disney World and I took you to this hotel and you're not appreciative. And the husband, the wife many times would report that you just, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted you to spend the time with me without being on your phone. I wanted you to just take the walk with me without everything revolving around food or gambling or, you know, things that you appreciate. So yes, definitely it can lead to a lot of anger and strife and sometimes just being aware of the differences and hashing it out either on a professional level or amongst the couple themselves would really get a couple very far. Um, what else would you tell someone who wants to make a relationship extraordinary? You know, the, the same line that I would tell a newlywed um, and I would tell a 20 you know, year veteran married couple, I would get literally opposite responses, which is fascinating, which, you know, if you take, if you, if you understand it and see it from the age level, you can see what a vast difference it is. So what I typically would tell the newlywed is, you know, if you want to make sure your marriage works, right, just make sure that you spend 45 minutes together a day talking and doing whatever it is. And the couple would usually laugh at me and say, 45 minutes, we spend eight hours a day. We uh, go on walks for three hours a day, like 45 minutes, which, you know, I, I understand where they're coming from, but the same expression I would tell a 45-year-old couple, 
um, that's married for 20 or 30 or 40 years and tell them, all I want you to do is speak for 45 minutes a day, they would also burst out like 45 minutes, be happy 45 minutes of a week, right? But it's the same couple because in the beginning of marriage, they obviously, the, the, the external love factor was there, which made them naturally attract. Um, once it gets, you know, just the love phase goes away and now reality kicks in a relationship needs a lot of work. 45 minutes a day is like another job or as a therapist, it's another client, right? Um, but really it, it, that's probably the key for any marriage to survive is to constantly be in check with each other and not allow daily routine to just take over, you know, values and goals that people have for themselves. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. Thanks guys for listening. Leave a comment below. I'd love to know what you think. And to book a relationship photo shoot, CJE session, or just to find out about more what we do, go to lifepicksrelationships.as.me. I'm waiting to hear from you.